um, and I look forward to your questions at the end. So, uh, again, uh, as Laura explained, my name is Brian Miller, um, and I'm the author of Above the Fold. Uh, and I teach at the Shintaro Akatsu School of Design uh, at the University of Bridgeport here in Connecticut. And I'm on the executive board of the Type Directors Club. Um, if you haven't heard of the Type Directors Club, you probably should. And uh, take, take a look at, look at it. It's a it's fantastic uh, club um, focused on, on typography. Uh, just a bit about my book. Um, I brag about my book the way I brag about my kids. Um, so it was the number one selling book last year in my design shop, uh, something I'm very proud of. It's used in over 40 classrooms um, currently at universities across the country, um, and it, it's gotten some good feedback. We're really excited about it. We just did our third uh, printing, so there's 17,000 copies uh, floating out there, and there's some preliminary talks about a second edition, which we're really excited about. So today I'm going to talk about specifically the information architecture portions of the book and as well as my experience and some other things that I've written about information architecture. Um, there's a lot of misnomers about information architecture out there, a lot of um, ill-conceived uh, ideas about what it is. So I'm going to talk about what information architecture is not, which I think frames up very nicely what information architecture is. I'm going to talk about the evolving role of an information architect. And then I'm going to talk about the site planning process, uh, which incorporates information architecture. And then I'm going to, because this is such a common question that I get, I'll talk a little bit about the tools uh, that information architects use. So 